Well, we didn't expect to be here today. <sighs> but we had truck trouble on the road. Welcome to the channel. I'm Paul. And I'm Liz, and we are exhausted. So if we look a little kind of <laughs> rough around the edges, it's because it's been a long day for us. We're about 150 miles from where we thought we were going to be today. We're stuck here for at least tonight, maybe tomorrow night. We don't know yet. You probably have seen that we now have two trucks. So we have the new one ton that pulls our RV. We've been on the road for four years, but recently we added another truck and that's the truck that I'm driving and that is the Ford F-150. It's a 2011. It's got 119,000 miles on it now. Whoever had this thing took really good care of it. And this is only our second time that we have ever driven in separate vehicles in our four years of full-time RVing. Mm -hmm. So I had the bright idea to go to Costco and I went and got $80 worth of frozen food and I said, okay, I'll meet you. And so I'm probably 30 miles behind you and that's when the incident happened. I get a phone call. I'm pulling into a gas station for fuel. Well, let me say what happened. I'm in the town of, what is it now? Wittenberg, Wittenberg, Wisconsin. And honestly, the way this unfolded, I feel so lucky. So I'm driving along, you know, minding my own business, cranking the tunes, and then a little audible beep happens and I look at the dash and it says engine over temp. Now I know when that warning comes up it's not like oh just drive for five or ten miles and you know then take care of it. I know that means immediately I have to stop. Stop. My, <laughs> yeah, stop now. <laughs> stop now. Well I was right at an exit in the town of Wittenberg. As soon as I turned off the exit I could actually feel that the engine was vibrating like I probably there was something really wrong and I thought well maybe a radiator hose blew or something I look and I see that there is a gas station not even you know a third of a mile from the exit I limp in there I open up the hood and there's evidence that there was water in the engine <laughs> but, because it was pouring out yeah well I, there was no water by then oh, there was there was no water there oh you a, were just seeing steam i was seeing a little bit of steam oh. so i was had no water there was a kind stranger just a wonderful good samaritan who said oh i heard you coming and i figured you needed help so the engine was making a strange sound right like because mm -hmm. it had no water and he asked me to start it. I started it and then it immediately, it started revving. And he said, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. It was revving like, I'm gonna die. That's how the engine was like, I'm gonna die right now. So we shut it off and he looked and he thought that there were a couple loose hoses on the top. And he said, well, I think you can just change those connectors. Well, next to the gas station, this is how lucky this was. There was a Napa, so a Napa Auto Star. And he actually knew the phone number and called them and told them, you know, you might need this, but I said, well, let me put in some coolant so we can see what happens. I didn't want to just buy parts. So I bought coolant and I put in the coolant and then pretty soon I heard it dripping out the bottom. <laughs> so then this good Samaritan looks at the bottom and he says, oh, you need a new water pump. Technically coolant pump, but, oh, but we'll say water pump because everybody well, calls them that. But across the street from the Napa was a auto shop. And uh, the Good Samaritan said, well, I've got to go back to work. They're closed from noon until one. It was just after 12. He said, you can go over there and maybe they'll fit you in. I mean, it's a Monday. So I thought, well, they'll probably be busy. And then I called Paul. I could see you were, what, 57 miles ahead of me. Yeah, we have this app now with our new GMC. It's uh, called Guardian. And we can see where the other person is at any given time. So what was my biggest fear when I called you? What was I concerned about? So you were at the gas station. You were worried that it wasn't safe to even drive 150 feet across the street with no coolant. And I, I asked a couple of important questions. Has it cooled off? It, it had been a good while, so I figured the engine had cooled off considerably. I just said, just start it while I'm on the phone. It had been like 45 minutes. And she started it, and I could hear that it was just idling. And I said, Yo, you're fine. You're just, you know, don't run it more than two minutes, but you'll, you'll be fine. Yeah. And even two minutes is, is, is being very conservative. You could have driven it probably a five minutes without really killing it. So I'm over there, and Paul's like, well, should I keep driving? 
So Paul was 90 miles from the destination, but 60 miles ahead of me. So he, you know, we were trying to figure out, does he keep driving? Do I wait and get it repaired? But then we thought, well, if it doesn't get repaired in time, then I'm going to need a hotel. And I just had the clothes on my back and I had $80 worth of frozen stuff with me. Now I had the Iceco cooler, which we love, but the Iceco cooler is not going to run if the truck isn't running. She was trying to figure all that out. I'm on RV parking looking for an RV campground near where the truck is, where, where you're broke down. So how did you come to that decision that you need to turn I just, around? I just knew based on what you told me that you'd lost your coolant pump. You had found a shop, but you didn't know if they were going to be able to fit you in. I know that to replace a coolant pump on that truck is going to take a minimum of, of two hours, probably more like three. The name of this shop is Beaversdorf Garage. Napa did order the, the pump, but I told them, based on the label on my engine, that I had a 6.2 6 liter. liter because it says that, but guess what? I don't, so they ordered the wrong pump. So it's a good thing you turned around because it might have been ready today, but now definitely not ready today. It'll probably be ready late morning tomorrow. And if you're thinking about RV life, I think that you need to be prepared for the unexpected. You know, your rig is going to break down. Your your tow vehicle is going to break down. I mean, we're not wishing that on you, but that's it, just part it, of the it life. Hap it happens. After the truck is fixed, we're trying to get to some friend's house, Paul and Dave. Hi, Paul and Dave. So they're six hours away. So we've got a nice long drive ahead of us when we do finally get on the road. I'm a wuss. I don't, I don't like to do six hours if I can avoid it. Because what our rule is for traveling, and we even did a video about that, is we do the rule of threes. We don't drive past three o'clock or more than 300 miles in a day. We do not travel outside of business hours. We do not travel on weekends. We're mm -hmm. not going to be traveling after five mm -hmm. because we know this stuff happens and it certainly makes life easier if you're breaking down during business hours. Well, we almost did a weekend thing once. We were traveling from Pismo to Oregon, and remember with a flat tire on, on the Golden Gate Bridge mm -hmm. that we found at the gas station, and we got into a tire shop just before they were closing and they were able to repair it. I think the main takeaway is that, that we just do not want to get 60 miles uh, between us. We needed to stick together. I think if I had left before Paul and gotten a jump start on the Costco, then we wouldn't be so far apart. Yeah, I had to turn around and drive an hour in the opposite direction, so. But he was able to save the groceries, <laughs> yeah, which was important. Yeah, we saved the groceries. We do love having the Guardian app so we can see where each other is. That is something that OnStore provides and we do recommend it. We've been having it now for two months. Yeah, and yeah it's, it's come in handy. We got a beautiful spot in an RV campground. Yeah, what a happy accident that is. We're at Toledo Falls Campground or Toledo. We don't know how it's pronounced in Wisconsin. If you know, let us know in the comments. It's a small, quaint little campground. With, uh, we're right on the pond. We're backed up to the pond. So, I mean, happy accident that we ended it's up in a spot. A spot this nice. It's a beautiful site. I saw they had bike rentals. I can hear a waterfall. I mean, they've it's, they've got a beach, so that's lovely. So share your breakdown stories if you if you'd like <laughs> in the comment section below. And any tips that you have.